But today I want you to remember these five things. And run the race of 2024 with these five things in mind. It will make you a better Christian. Number one, Act of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 34. Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Why will the chief apostle, the head of the church, immediately Jesus left, he left the church in his hand. He said, I perceive that of a truth, God, not the respect person. Why did he say so? He said so because the disciples that were shadowed with the gospel, they were not the one who were spreading the gospel. The people that people thought God can never use, they began, they began to do something extraordinary. Then they now said, let's stop these people from doing what they were doing so that they won't corrupt the gospel. And Peter came and opened his mouth. As the head of the church, as the bishop, the first bishop of the church, and said, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. He can use anybody. If you people thought you cannot be used or you don't want to be used, if you are not moved to do anything, say, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. He continued in verse 35. He said, But in every nation, Anybody who fear God and walk at righteousness, God accept them and use them. The only reason why God can commit genuine covenant weight into your hands is when you fear Him. What is lacking in church today is the fear of God. What a lot of Christians don't have now is the fear of God. They asked Peter, why are they doing this miracle? Why are these people doing this? He said, I perceive that God does not respect person. But he accepts those who fear him and does righteousness. I want you to begin to judge all your decisions from the point of righteousness this year. This decision I'm making, is it a righteous decision? Am I on the right path? This that I'm saying, this that I made, I made up my mind to do, is it the right thing? There is nobody here, including a child, that does not know what is wrong and what is right. Fear God! The Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and he said that the old duty of man Verse 13, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. The old duty of man. He said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, Fear God is the conclusion of the whole matter and keep his commandments. For this is the old duty of man. You have abandoned your duty to God. Your duty is to fear God. When you sit down in the comfort of your home and you want to engage in any talk, let that talk be filled with the fear of God. Fear God is a duty you are required to keep. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, I'm still talking about the fear of God, the number one thing that church doesn't have now. There is no longer fear of God in the church. That is why people can come to church with their market goods and wait till after service and say, Sister, you could like this bag where I bring. No fear of God. You see, gathering on Sunday as a time to make money. 
not an holiday. You have all, all you think is about yourself. There is no fear of God. You come to the house of God, you want to sit in the highest position. You want to be honored, you want to be respected. You want everybody to pamper you. No more pampering. For God, no, the respect person. Now, person to respect himself. Fear God. They will be singing as well. God, now your mate. No. And the way they are singing himself, they are singing as if they are just enjoying. God, now your mate. To be not good dance. God, now your mate. It's to ask someone, God, now your mate. Fear God. Listen, if somebody tie red clothes, red, 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 and put cough messing, cough messing bottle and tie it on it and put it in an empty land, nobody will drop one single of paper. If you write on signboard, I take God beg you. Don't dirty this place. Now that signboard they go, we will put. People fear what can kill the flesh. They, they don't fear God that can destroy both soul and the body in hell. You don't fear God. That's why you talk the way you talk. Proverbs 1 verse 7 said, said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Knowledge. But the fool despise wisdom and instruction. When you are instructed in the house of God, you despise it. God see you as a fool. The scripture says, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10, he repeated, he said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the holy is understanding. Brothers and sisters, let's go back. Referencing God in fear. Serving him with fear, the Bible says, and trembling. God is no respecter of person. When Saul felt he was on the king, the only king on the throne, and he did whatever he likes, God sent Samuel to go and look for David. He looked for a younger man that only feared God. And the man was anointed. Have you ever seen where a king is on the throne and another king was anointed? It doesn't exist. But he existed. God did it. He anointed David king while Saul was king. And he gave Saul the spirit of madness. Yet he was seated on the throne. But he has been rejected by God. Listen. The significant achievement you have made does not mean that God cannot abandon you. If he can abandon Saul that he raised by himself and he got to a point the character of Saul was so appalling that God told Samuel I have forgotten about Saul. Go to the house of Jesse. I have prepared for myself a king. God, lift up your hands. Pray this prayer. Lord, don't replace me. No matter what I do, have mercy upon me. Pray that prayer. I give you my life and your will see me through. I give you my body and my heart. Break me Remote me where you send me, I will go. Whatever I do, love, don't replace me with a stone. If there is any prayer, believers should pray, Lord, don't replace me. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. God gives you money for a reason. He raise you up for a purpose. But don't push him to the point that he will look at another person and abandon you.
pray God don't replace me don't replace me oh Lord don't replace me have mercy upon my soul it's a privilege to serve God it is not a right it's a privilege to be wealthy ah, it's not by power it's not by your hard labor God just favored you but may God not replace you in Jesus name Saul taught listen to the qualification of Saul when Samuel saw Saul he said Saul is the tallest young man in Israel with a square shoulder bodily he was fit structurally he was prepared for it he was made from heaven to be king that was why he had all the quality but David was not made from heaven to be king David just became a man after God's own heart he was doing what God loved that was what dragged him to the palace he was never to be made king God chose the house of Benjamin and desired that they would be king and raise up Saul but Saul messed it up because of his character whatever that will make you to fall out of favor with God this year I pray for you may ever delete that thing from your life I don't like your amen at all Saul was actually qualified David was not qualified age wise David was zero in manners of approach David don't have it like that David was not supposed to be where he was then. But the oil that was poured on his head, God abandoned the existing king. Existing king. Without his time expiring, God raised another person. Let me tell you this. No matter who you are in the house of God, whatever you are doing, there is a reserve waiting for you to make mistake. Your reserve is close. It's in the shadow. Someone that you don't expect may be the one that will replace you. That is why I fast every day. I don't want to be replaced. God can replace anybody. He's no respecter of person. You know one thing with God that baffled me? If you do good for 20 years and the day God opens your record, you do evil for five minutes. He will judge you by the evil of five minutes. And the evil of five minutes will erase your 20 years of good work. He said in the book of Ezekiel, that is why the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you live in the fear of God, you will understand certain things. He said in the book of Ezekiel, he said, when a righteous man who have done righteousness and suddenly in a split of seconds did evil and death came, he said, the man will go to hell. And if somebody who has been doing evil suddenly in a split of seconds before death come, he repented and prayed to God, he will make heaven. That is where all these hula bulas about TB Joshua, you are just disturbing yourself. The man is dead and gone. You don't know his relationship with God. You were not there when he was breathing his last. You don't know what he said. All I know that before he died, he was always going to the mountain with Matt and crying to God. You don't know why he was crying. You that is alive, instead of it to repair your life. God is no respecter of person. You can know an armed robber now. And in the few minutes, God can honor him if you repent. The Bible says, the Bible says Goliath was mighty and big. He harassed Israelite army for 40 days and 40 nights. He will come out and say, Oh, ye children of Israel, bring up a champion among you. Me and your champion will fight. Whoever defeats each other, the rest are subject themselves to the person. Then, those 
who are qualified like Saul did not come out. God does not look at your qualification. He looks at your heart. God told Samuel, he said, I don't judge after outward appearance. God look at the heart of man. If God look at your heart, will he bless you? The question is left for you to answer. Let's forget all this, all this fake life. Be sincere. Listen, I have 2024, 12 months. You have the same month, the same time, the same hour. But your mindset may not allow you to gain anything from this year. Your thought process, the way you think, may not allow you to make anything good out of this year. Change your thoughts. Focus on God. Fear the Lord. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You will understand that when you fear God, God can use you anytime, any day. That is number one thing. The fear of God. Number two, anywhere I get to, I stop. I may not be able to say everything. Number two, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 21. Proverbs, that's number two. Open your Bible. Tell your neighbor, hear this. Proverbs, he said, my son, I said 23, verse 21. Proverbs 23. Listen to me. He said, How many of you used to drink? Raise up your hand. Then let me tell you a word today. If you want to drink, you better don't serve God. Because when you drink and be with the devil, the devil will give you what he can give you because you are doing his will. But when you are in the church and serving God and you are drinking, you are sowing rag for your future. Hear what the Bible says. The way, there are things you need to... Listen, if you don't drink, will you die? I have never tasted alcohol since I was born. I know die. These are problems. These are the things that will limit you this year. Lack of the fear of God. And you are always drinking. You have special compartment in your fridge where you keep that drink. Your family is aware. Your son knows. Your daughter knows. Now you want to correct your daughter and say, I don't like the way this girl. No. They learned it from you. Some of you say you drink and give your son. Which kind of training are you giving? That boy, you see, a... a Children are always better than their parents. If you are drinking four bottles and you are training your children, your son, your son will drink eight. Your son must multiply it. Mama, where they drink, they come church. They, they make body, they make body light. They say get one beer. It's a blood tonic. Have you ever seen where doctor prescribed beer as a blood tonic? Did they sell the beer in, 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 in farmers? They said that one, that one black, it they give blood. You are deceiving yourself. Check waiting the right for the beer, whether they say they give blood. Even you smoke, and they will write on the paper, smokers are liable to die young. You still carry the stick, the smoker. Of person are you? Government say later now they say they, they, they first say it's not good to drink, but now they say drink responsibly. What kind what kind of a responsible man? You are even sending your son to go and buy the bottle for you. Ah, when that boy become a terrible child, don't blame any witches or wizards. The Bible says, hear this. Hear what the Bible says. It says, for the drunkard. Do you know the meaning of gluten? Only you, you can eat a bunch of plantain. Your eba must be like a mountain inside the plate. You have trained your children to eat like somebody who will die on top of it. You people eat as if tomorrow no day. 
you will sit down in fact you even used to watch a sketch a sketch that somebody with different food only i'm going to eat they drink mineral they drink sobo they drink and you're happy and you you show like ah look at you the bible says for the drunkard and the gluten shall come to poverty that's the final statement the final word may you not sell your house to drink beer watch those who take our drug they can't sell anything you just see that isn't it am I correct every now and then I saw nose they scratch them They, they can sell anything. The Bible says, the final word that the Bible says, people who eat too much and people who drink will be poor. Then make your choice. Make your choice this year. Drink and eat basin of Gary. In your house, two of you eat one basket at a city. A man told me one day, he said, only his son boil a whole bunch of plantain and finish it. Hallelujah. Please, eat moderately. Cut down your food. If you are eating three square meals, it's not, it's not a good thing. It's not good to eat three square meals. When you are not a goat, your mouth will not stop. <laughs> Wait. If you do that last year, don't do that this year. If I see you in beer parlor, there is no excuse you can give me that can validate your irresponsibility. Am I correct? We say only in that beer parlor, that's where you sit to buy mineral. Go somewhere where it's only mineral. Go and buy mineral. Stop deceiving yourself. Make I stop. They will carry they will carry a bag from a better supermarket when I drink the inside. They have fanciful bag that you will see the bag, you will say, Ah, this person has gone to a better supermarket. You don't know that Nabia the inside. He say, drink and eat poverty. Is arranging his load coming for your address. Then when the poverty come, you now give somebody like us work. Maybe they do prayer and fasting. Say, Father, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, all the witches and wizards. No witches and wizards. Everything will make you poor. Now through your mind. Now your faith, let make you poor. Listen to me. Somebody said to me one day, say, Sir, he said the Bible says not everything that goes through the mouth that defies a man. I say you are very correct. Before you take the kind of beer you take, you think up. And you decide whether the one way chill. Some of you, if you say mortuary standard, you're already planning. Now you'll be disturbing people. Yes, a spirit of death, they follow you. When you're always asking for mortuary standard, mortuary, oh, the thing where they enter your body as mortuary standard, mortuary standard. Tell your neighbor, save your life this year. Hallelujah. I will give you that too today. Rise up to your feet.